In the 19th century, violence interfered with relations between workers and employers. In the 20th century, a social contract restored peace before it failed. What will we see in the 21st century? Hello, my name is Janet Stewart and I'm a proud member of the Canadian Union of Skilled Workers. Welcome to another 21st Century Insight. Let's travel back to a street corner in 19th century Canada. Trouble is brewing. Striking workers are facing off against their employer's private police forces. In a flash, batons and clubs are flying. Workers and employers clashed often over workplace issues in the 19th century, and the cost to society was steep. Governments struggled to restore stability. Some employers tried to improve the situation. In the U.S., industrialist J.D. Rockefeller brought together employers and workers to discuss an idea called harmony of interests. Rockefeller got help from a Canadian labour expert and future Canadian Prime Minister, William Lyon Mackenzie King. Together, they reached a conclusion. The way to solve workplace conflict, they believed, was to get elected employee representatives to sit down with managers for discussion on company time. The year was 1913. More than a hundred years later, we're still having the same discussion. In the 20th century, labor relations improved as a result of the shared belief that working together was better than waging war. Workers, employers, and government came together in a social contract. This arrangement was supposed to ensure everyone would benefit from the success of the business. By the end of the 20th century, the social contract was history. About the same time, workers started to abandon unions en masse. With workers on the outside, the wealth created by the economy flowed to the very wealthy. Why did the social contract fail? Professor William Domhoff says the three parties never addressed the issues that divided them. Workers, Domhoff explained, turned to unions to protect them from wage cuts, unsafe working conditions, and other threats to their welfare. Business owners don't like unions, he said, because owners need flexibility to stay competitive. So controlling labor costs, which are often their biggest cost, is important. Owners are also used to being in charge. They don't welcome pushback from people they view only as employees, rather than as breadwinners for families and fellow citizens. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms includes a legal framework that encourages workers and employers to come together. Recent decisions by the Supreme Court of Canada support the idea of workers and employers coming together to address issues, and that workers in Canada have the right to bargain collectively and to participate in the workplace. We have won the right to voice in the workplace. Now, we need to focus on the issues that divide workers, employers, and government. We have to take responsibility for getting what we need to succeed from the workplace. Business owners need to move past their egos and fears that workers won't share their interests. CSW has built a framework to engage in these discussions. Now, we need to seek out employers who share a belief in the harmony of interests. We can then work to build a better future in the workplace and in society as well. In the 21st century, workers will struggle for the right to participate in the workplace. What worker and employer mindsets do we have to overcome in order to succeed? Find out. Watch the next episode of the 21st Century Insights. Bye for now.